Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. For those who may not remember, every Wednesday service this Lent will examine one part of Luther's small catechism as a way to draw us back to the depth of the basics. The small catechism can be used as a resource to use daily alongside scripture, and it is my hope that our time together will move you to consider the interpretations Martin Luther presents as one faithful way to connect deeper with God. And if you've misplaced your small catechism or you're not sure you own one, there are some on the table out in the narthex that are free to take. The format for these sermons will be me reading a part of the catechism as these homilies begin before going into the message for the evening. And so tonight our focus is on confession. So hear these words from Martin Luther. What is private confession? Private confession has two parts. First, we make a personal confession of sins to the pastor, and then we receive absolution, which means forgiveness as from God himself. This absolution we should not doubt, but firmly believe that thereby our sins are forgiven before God in heaven. Did I throw you off a bit? Private confession? That sounds like a Catholic practice. We have to remember that Luther was Catholic, and even when Protestantism was growing, he found it worthwhile to keep the practice of private confession in the church. For Catholics, private confession or penance is a sacrament, and it is required. For Lutherans, we do not require private confession nor call it a sacrament. This practice has mostly been lost to us in modern-day American Lutheranism. But for Luther, confession was a gift that the people should participate in often. And part of why, why we do not do private confession very much is because Luther believed a priest was not necessary to bring about confession and absolution to a non-priest. We believe anyone can go to God in prayer and receive the same forgiveness. There is no need for a third party. Our practice is often public confession in worship, which we did tonight, by the way which is a common liturgy with space to silently bring forth the sin weighing on your heart before the pastor declares the absolution, where sin is indeed forgiven, thanks to our Lord Jesus Christ. And this is a good practice, and I hope you truly feel changed knowing that your sin is forgiven. Why bring private confession into the conversation? But it is easy to forget how central confession is to our faith. In some ways, confession is what truly separates the church from any other entity in the world. Only in the church, meaning the community of the church, can you receive the forgiveness of sin? I wonder if we really grasp how radical it is that our sin can be wiped away. The things you do that are wrong deserve to be punished. You have disobeyed God and you are not fit to be in God's presence. But we are because we have the forgiveness of sin brought about by Jesus. 
There is no other place you can go and name the brokenness that scars your body and soul and be told that you are forgiven. That the gunk can be washed away, that your past does not define your identity. Are you burdened with guilt, pain, and haunted by your actions? Through confession, there is absolution. There is the possibility of freedom of those burdens. Why private confession? Because as our scripture reading says today, if we confess our sins, God who is faithful and just will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Private confession is a space for you to name the sin in its fullest, raw, ugly form. In public confession, no one dares actually name their sin out loud because it's embarrassing and can feel shameful. But in private confession, it is you, God, and the presence of a minister who only wants you to find healing and grace. Technically, you can confess to any other Christian and receive absolution. But as a minister, I personally say to you that we clergy are here to care for you. We want you to feel renewed and experience God's grace. We want you to know the fullness of God's promises and that you truly hear that forgiveness is for you. And forgiveness is heard at its fullest when your sin is named. When God's promise intercepts your experience of sin and declares you clean. Dear friends, confession is everything. It is the practice of freeing ourselves from prison to turn away from destruction toward ourselves and others and instead brings us face to face with our life-giving God. We need to name our sin. One, to release our burdens and two, to recognize that we carry and cause burdens in the first place. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Every single person has sin. Every single person needs to be changed. Confession can change everything. Isn't our biggest problem that no one wants to admit when they are wrong? The world's way is to look at other people's wrongs and bash them into oblivion. But the church offers something far greater. For in the church, we confess that we are sinners and are met with grace and forgiveness. In the church, we are called to call out when someone is in sin, not for the sake of shaming them, but to enable our community and world to better love their neighbor. The church does not cancel people. The church proclaims God's promise of forgiveness so that people are transformed. Friends, I invite you to ponder on Luther's call to private confession. And I will gladly be the ear that listens and the voice that proclaims grace-filled forgiveness to you. May you ponder the power of naming your sin and receive the absolute truth that God forgives you. 
No longer will you be bound by past or present demons, but you exist anew as the beautiful person that God created you to be. This is a daily practice, one that you may have to do many times, but every time will be received with the same forgiveness. And if this daily practice among individuals becomes a communal tradition, then perhaps we can bring healing in the name of Jesus Christ to a world that is both prideful and wounded. To change the narrative of shaming and the narrative of letting injustices go unresolved. Through confession, a world where all people love their neighbor and enables them to be as well as possible. Thanks be to God. Amen.